First and the smallest of the Star Destroyer was the Gladiator class Star Destroyer that was manufactured by the Quat Drive Yard. Originally intended to serve as a dedicated Star Destroyer escort in heavy battle, the Gladiator class was repurposed as an independent long-range patrol vessel. Considered to be the smallest of the Star Destroyer at 600 meters or 1,969 feet in length, the Gladiator class was equipped with a Class 1 primary hyperdrive and a Class 8 secondary, a navigational computer, a long-range sensor, and multiple hangars. In addition, the Gladiator class was operated by 1,255 officers, pilot, and illicit crew member. The Hera class Dreadnought was a heavily armed class of wedge-shaped capital ship that was the backbone of the Imperial Navy of the reconstituted Sith Empire. Produced by the Tarad Starship Manufacturing and measured around 800 meters long with a heavy reinforced hull plating and shield generator, the vessel carried a complement of over 100 starfighters, bombers, and shuttle. A single Dreadnought required a crew of 2,400 and could carry up to 7,300 troops. The epitome of the Imperial destructive power, the Dreadnought was one of the best armed ships by the Imperial military. Its wedge-shaped design is typical of Imperial warships, but its technology is strictly state-of-the-art. Between the two prongs was one of the ship's hangar bay, with both hangars protected by force fields. In addition, two hangars were located on either side of the ship. The Victory class Star Destroyer was a type of Star Destroyer used by both the Republic and Imperial Navy and was capable of deploying garrison base and making surface landing. It plays an important role in the transition from the Republic to the Empire and in many ways was a direct predecessor to the Imperial class 1 Star Destroyer. The vessel could be used to provide security for freighters in a convoy and could also be used to transport important goods and accompany other Imperial Star Destroyer. Measuring at 900 meters or 2,950 feet in length, the Victory featured a vertical structure rising from its central tower, as well as a protruding flaps on both sides of the vessel with concussion missile. As a backbone of the Galactic Republic naval forces during the Clone Wars, the Venator was a versatile capital ship capable of serving as a troop carrier, a cargo transport, and a warship for the ship-to-ship -ship combat. It was built by Kuat Drive Yard for naval operational of the Galactic Republic during the Clone Wars. Because it was built to carry many starfighters, the Venator class featured a dual bridge tower design. The port tower was a starfighter's command bridge, while the starboard tower serves as a standard helm and command bridge. The Venator was defended by powerful deflector shields and a hull armor plating, while equipped with various weapons, long-range sensors, navigation computer, and corresponding systems. The long dorsal flight deck on the ship enabled hundreds of starfighters to launch rapidly but made the vessel vulnerable to attack. Ultimately though, the Venator class was decommissioned and was later replaced by the Imperial class Star Destroyer, a larger warship that was modeled by the Republic predecessor. The iconic Imperial class Star Destroyer first appeared in the opening scene of Star Wars where the Star Destroyer chased the CL-90 Corvette. It's probably the most recognizable capital ship in galactic history and represents the Imperial dominance and military supremacy. With a length of 1,600 meters, the wedge-shaped Imperial II class Star Destroyer was 445 meters longer than its immediate predecessor, the Venator class Star Destroyer. The Star Destroyer was a symbol of the Empire's military might, carrying devastating firepower and assault forces. A Star Destroyer can easily overtake most fleeing craft, blast them into submission, or draw them into the main hangar with its tractor beam. With the bridge being located in the upper half of the ship, the officer's quarter were located right below it. On the command bridge were the deflector shield domes and the tractor beam targeting array. The Imperial Class II Star Destroyer was equipped with eight giant turbolaser battery, can carry up to 9,700 stormtroopers, and 72 TIE fighters, as well as attack and landing craft. At the height of its power, the Empire operated over 25,000 Star Destroyer. Roughly 30 years after the Battle of Endor, the new resurgent class Star Destroyer was constructed to replace the aging Imperial class by the First Order, and would borrow the design philosophy from the highly respected and coveted ship. 
The Allegiance-class battlecruiser was a large warship in the Imperial Navy. It was designed with one purpose in mind, which was to destroy other large capital ships. The ship also had several cannons situated on the mid-axis of the vessel, similar to the battery located on the mid-axis of the Imperial-class models, as well as three similar batteries on each side of the ship. Because it was a hangarless model, the vessel could only rely on its own exterior ordnance, as the Allegiance appeared to be unable to carry any starfighters or ground unit internally. The Allegiance class was well armed with a turret gun battery in a similar layout to the Imperial class 1 Star Destroyer, abated with the increased numbers of guns due to its larger frame. It was similar in appearance to both the Victory and Imperial class Star Destroyer, but was larger than all of them, reaching a length of 2,200 meters or 7,218 feet. One of the most recognizable features of the Allegiance class battlecruiser have a visible armor reactor bulge on the ventral sides of the superstructure, similar to the Imperial and Victory class. The powerful flagship used by General Hux and Kylo Ren, the finalizer was the first new resurgent class Star Destroyer, whose size and firepower clearly violates the treaty between the New Republic and the First Order that governs capital ships. What was unique about the resurgent class Star Destroyer was its bow was split into two along the side, housing open space, supported by a truss structure that was a departure from its predecessor design philosophy. Designed for advanced ship-to-ship -ship combat capabilities, it serves as a symbol of the First Order power, an improvement on the design of the Imperial class vessel. Almost twice the length of the Imperial class Star Destroyer, the resurgent class Star Destroyer was 2,915 meters or 9,563 feet in length and emulate the dagger-shaped design from its former Imperial-class vessel. The Zeissen-class Star Destroyer, also known as the Final Order Star Destroyer, was almost an exact design to the original Imperial-class 1 Star Destroyer, with the exception of the super laser on the underbelly of the vessel. The actual super weapon cannon was a super weapon capable of destroying entire planets. The weapon was activated by direct impulse of ionic energy from the reactor, and when fired, it was capable of penetrating deep into the planet's core. The Zeissen class represent the first order vision of the galaxy forced into mission by sheer military might and intimidation. The ship was scaled up and fitted with an efficiency automation system to lower crew requirement to 29,585 officers and troops. The lesser-known Predator-class battlecruiser Mark II possessed a dagger shape similar to other prominent warships in the Imperial Navy and was part of the KDY Star Destroyer design family. The Predator size ranged from 4,800 meters to the approximately 8,000 meters. Few ships of this class were commissioned, as the Imperial strategy didn't favor the battlecruiser's design. The battlecruiser were regarded as a less effective tail weapon than the more massive Dreadnought. Combined with being more expensive than the individual Star Destroyer and less versatile, production of the Predator Mark II was stopped. The mandated 4 class siege dreadnought was a vessel used by the Force Order during the conflict with the Resistance. It was manufactured by the Kawar Intrala Engineering and was currently the largest known and most powerful warship in service with the First Order Navy besides the Mega Class Star Dreadnought Supremacy. What made this ship unique was its two massive orbital bombardment cannons, elongated command bridge, and it was rather flat in design compared to previous Star Destroyer. In addition, it has 26-point defense turret cannons on its dorsal side for protection against starfighters and also possessed six tractor beam projectors at its bow. The ship was said to have more firepower than a dozen Star Destroyer combined, it was two and a half times the length of the resurgent class Star Destroyer. Measuring in at 7,670 meters or 25,160 feet in length, it could also carry a crew of 53,000 officers, 140,000 enlisted personnel, and 22,000 stormtroopers. In many ways, the mandated was a radical departure from the standard design structure of previous capital ships. The executor class Star Dreadnought was a personal flagship of Darth Vader and was one of the largest and most powerful Imperial vessel ever constructed. Measuring around 19,000 meters or 62,336 feet in length, 
It basically eclipses its escorting Imperial class Star Destroyer and boasting around 5,000 turbo laser and ion cannons. The center of the arrowhead shaped hull was covered by a city like superstructure, while the undersize hosts most of the engineering system. The aft end of the executor was marked by the trapezoid command tower, similar to the Imperial Star Destroyer design language, and at the bottom of the end of the hull was 13 thrusters responsible for moving the vessel. Due to its large size, it could only reach a top speed of 100 km per hour, which was rather slow compared to other capital ships. Furthermore, these starships were crewed by 280,000 personnel and officers, and were outfitted with a Class II hyperdrive and a titanium reinforced hull. And finally, the Supremacy, the largest star destroyer ever constructed. A gigantic warship built on an unprecedented scale, the Mega Destroyer Supremacy served Supreme Leader Snoke as a mobile command center. Measuring more than 60 kilometers or 37 miles from wingtip to wingtip, this vast flying wing boasts the destructive power of a full fleet, has the industrial capability of a planet, and serves as a test bed for the first order newest military advances. The supremacy was built at an astounding cost and at a secret birthplace in the unknown regions. The ship had approximately 32 sublight engines, which was an improvement over the sublight engine system, as well as a very powerful hyperdrive. It can hold over 2,200,000 personnel, including officers, stormtroopers, gunner, engineers, and communication staff. In addition, the Supremacy possessed thousands of heavy turbo lasers, anti ship missile battery, heavy ion cannons, and tractor beam projectors. The bow of the ship possessed numerous long range heavy turbo laser tower. Only the Death Stars and the Star Killer base was more powerful. There were also a few notable Star Destroyers I have left out in this animation, including the Nebula class Star Destroyer, the Sectator class Star Destroyer, the Vindicator, the Bellator class Dreadnought, and the Eclipse class Dreadnought. It seems to me like each new generation of capital ships get larger with time, and it doesn't necessarily mean that they get any better. My biggest complaint about these mega large Star Destroyers was they were easily defeated with the much smaller rebel forces and without the need of an extremely large capital ship. Personally, I think it would be far more effective and more efficient with resources and easier to manage with a smaller fleet than building a mega class Star Destroyer. So what are your favorite Star Destroyer and why? In addition, if you want me to go more into depth into these Star Destroyers like the Resurgent, Mandator, or Supremacy, leave your comment below. Like always, check out my playlist on the right hand corner if you want to know more about the Imperial class Star Destroyer, the Venator, and the Acclimator Star Destroyer. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.